Hello, power users. Ever put a lot of work into your sliders, placed important information within them, only for them to become completely secondary elements in the user experience? Let's learn how to keep our sliders at the forefront of your user's attention using Glue's new GSAP slider tween. Let's take a look at what we have here. This amazing slider has been built entirely using Elementor containers and widgets thanks to Glue's slider power feature. Sliders like these, made with slider power, can replace entire sections of our landing pages to keep them from becoming overly long. However, if we put some important information in slide 3, the user might just choose to scroll down and miss it. That said, after some very easy adjustments, we can see that the slider is now controlled by page scrolling and won't scroll away until all slides have been properly displayed. This is called pinning, and more information on how to set up this on other elements and GSAP animations can be found in the tutorial on screen and in the description. Once the last slide has been seen, we can now scroll past the first slider and see that we've done the exact same thing for our slides widget down here. Again, all slides will need to be shown before the entire widget scrolls away, after which we'll see that this works on our image carousel widget as well. Let's take a look at how we implemented this. Starting from our slider power slider up here, there's an important distinction that needs to be made between our containers here. So let's take a look at our navigator. As we know from our slider power tutorial, we have a container that we called slider, which is the one we enabled slider power on and did our setup in. Inside, we'll find the slides containers, which we'll be able to ignore this time around. However, we can see that the slider container is actually inside another container. This one container will be most important for our slider tween, as it will be our trigger element. So let's go to the advanced tab and give it a unique CSS ID of sec1. Moreover, as we remember from the other GSAP and pinning tutorials, the view height of this container will determine the amount of scrolling necessary to display all slides. So let's give it a view height of 802. It's important to remember though that the transition speed will still be controlled by our slider power settings. Speaking of, we'll then need to go into our slider container. In the slider power options here in the layout tab, we'll need to find the advanced settings. Here, in the GSAP connector settings, we will need to specify a unique identifier. Let's call at slider one. While we're here, let's make sure that the slider won't loop or autoplay in the playback settings of the configure tab, and that it won't be navigable by any means except our GSAP scrolling by making sure auto pagination and navigation are off, and that user interaction is off as well in the interaction tab. Furthermore, in the common settings of the advanced tab, we'll toggle off touch move as well. This is all to make sure that nothing will interfere with the GSAP tween. Going to the advanced tab on this same container, we'll also need to give it a unique CSS ID. Let's call at slider. That's all we need to set up our slider tween. So let's navigate to GSAP here in the page settings, Let's turn it on and add a GSAP event with our repeater. Here, we'll specify that our new event will be a slider tween. We'll also need to specify what kind of slider we're working with, in this case, our slider power slider. However, this will work with the slides and image carousel widgets too, as we already saw, but also with the reviews widget, media carousel widget, and the loop carousel widget. With slider power selected, we will need to paste here the slider power ID we set earlier, slider one. The trigger element, as mentioned before, will be the ID of our uppermost container which houses the slider. Sec1. Remember to insert a hashtag symbol just before it, since it's a CSS ID. We'll want to make sure that event scrolling is turned on, and that the canvas settings are set up appropriately, in this case starting at top top, and ending at bottom bottom, with a scrub value of 1. More information on the canvas settings can be found in the GSAP tutorial on screen, and in the description. The pin settings is what interests us most in this case. Here, we'll want the pin element to be the ID of the container that has slider power set up in. Just remember that this is not the slider power ID, but the ID of the container itself that we've set before in this case, slider. Let's toggle on pin spacing as well, as it might help in some applications. By updating the page, we can see that our pinning is working as intended for our slider power slider to replicate the pinning effect on our slides and image carousel widgets. The steps are similar, but even simpler. Let's do it on both of them. We can see both containers with our widgets in them have a quite tall view height of 500. This is again, to determine the scrolling amount necessary to let the animation breathe. 
We'd given each container a unique CSS ID, and we did the same for our slides and carousel widgets. With those in mind, navigating back to our GSAP settings, we'll add two more slider tweens, one per widget. Let's do the slides widget tween first by selecting the slides widget in the slider type menu. For the selector, we can use the widget's CSS ID. The trigger element will be set to the container that has our widget inside. Canvas settings will stay default for this one as well. And as for our pin element, we'll use the sale widget selector so that it gets pinned to itself and won't scroll away until all slides have been displayed. We will do the exact same setup for our carousel, but we'll select the image carousel widget in the slider type menu and use the appropriate selector and trigger element. With all of this done, updating and navigating back to the front end, we will see that we have correctly replicated the page setup shown at the beginning of the tutorial. With all three slider types correctly pinned and showing all slides before scrolling away, the same exact setup can be used for all the other supported slider widgets. Thank you for watching. We hope that this tool, combined with Glue's slider power, will revolutionize the way you think of sliders as functional design elements. See you next time.